Hello, everybody. We're doing so good. <laughs> great. Welcome, welcome, welcome to stream. Yes. <laughs> I. Yes. So we're back at it, and hopefully, we are finishing fucking Ace Attorney. Hello, Jacob. How are you doing today? I hope all is well. Um. So yeah, we're playing Ace Attorney. We're gonna fucking finish this. Ari, you're finally going to uh, experience the end of this trial, which is the best part of it. Okay. And I think we should just jump into it. Anyway, yeah. All right. All right. December 28th, 9.51 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, no two. But how's streaming been going, uh, Jacob? How's it been going? This is it. This is it. You're- this is you. Judgment day. <laughs> Allow me to forget everything that has ever happened in the past. I'm so st stupid right now. Phoenix is you. You are Phoenix. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. The fuck? I think you- Hold on. <laughs> My controller just vibrated. What's the big idea? Sorry, Nick! I only touched your shoulder! I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. See how frizzy my hair is? S super frizzy. So frizzy. Anyway, today's the last day of the trial! Good luck, Nick! Doing well, was playing yeah. Street Fighter Six, annoyed at my Thanks, friend Maya. because he's complaining about learning how to combo for once in the game and he doesn't like it. <laughs> Imagine being annoyed about comboing. Like, of course you could be annoyed by it, but like, it's kind of like part of the game. So I'm surprised the other Street Fighters didn't have it. Solid 38 followers, let's fucking go. Nice. Yeah, fuck yeah. Especially since you've been streaming for so little time, fuck yeah. Oh yeah. Took me <laughs> over a year to get there. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. I hope one karma doesn't push him too hard. I am sad. Whoa! W what? What the fuck are you doing? Sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Nick, you are not. Helping my self esteem think, right now! I don't think logistically this is how electricity works. Yeah, um, can but... you just. Do you have an expired condom in your wallet? Like, maybe touching rub rubber will make this go away. What the fuck did you just ask me? Well, I don't imagine that you ever use your condom, so I imagine it's expired. Goodbye, Maya. Right! Good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Will ya, pal? No. What's gotten into that girl? Detective Dumbshit. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. How did it go, Detective? <gasps> Stop! Have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. <gasps> Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. You little bitch-ass liar. Thank you for the water check. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? Because... He does remember. And I'm going to prove it. So, you know, my mom and her husband bought a new brand of bottled water, and I don't know how to feel about it. Is it spring water? Yeah, but it tastes different. Well, yeah, spring water is gross. What? Spring water is gross. You know, we just have different taste buds. It says so in the Bible, Ari. Oh. <laughs> don't, don't. This is my friend Ari. Me. <laughs> I'm the one who 
who grew up adjacent to a cult. <laughs> well, I'm the one who grew up in a cult. What cult? Southern Baptist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna say something similar, and I was like, "I'm prepared. I'm prepared for this answer." But where does it say in a Bible? Well, uh, between your mom's legs. Sorry, that was. I don't think. That's a Bible. December. Bible does not. Hugh Hefner didn't write a Bible, Danny. You know what? We're all. We've all got religious trauma in our own ways in this chat room. All three of us. We're yeah. doing great. Amazing. <laughs> anyway. December 28th, 10 a.m. This we got carnival. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so good at insults, Jacob. You have no idea. I'm a, I'm a writer. Is she, she is a writer. I'm a writer. Uh... Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth, I know that guy. That is my mm. mother. Mm. Well, that is also my lover, so. What? The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. No clapback. That's nice. Uh, very well. We love an unbothered king. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. There's a reason no one hears my insults. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. In other news, how are you still alive, defense attorney? Wouldn't you like to know? Weather boy. On, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well. Mr. Von Conroy, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker is yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very fucking well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. What insults are you, like, slogging at people, Danny? Um, good ones. <laughs> really? Because I don't remember any. Okay, usually it's, like, usually it's me being sarcastic and southern. Like, I go, you're so pretty. You know? Like, I just, like, I hide it behind nice language. You've never called me pretty! <laughs> yeah, because you've never been stupid! You're welcome! Oh shit, yay, thanks! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. <laughs> he lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. Quote unquote. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. For those of you that are that did not hear that last sentence, let me just reiterate everything we've learned so far. Hmm. Witness. Why did you run away yesterday? Objection! The witness was not running away as you will not testify. Bitch. <laughs> Very well. Please begin your testimony. I don't like that animation. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the popping nose bubble? Yeah. yeah. I, I have a feel... I, I, I feel like it's like Picasso-level art, you know? Like, hard for people to understand the true beauty of it. Sure. I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did, but I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Paul, you see? I forgot I gave him an accent. I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. Er, uh, I mean, I need one of those motive things right, and I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? Snot bubble finally popping on his face. Yeah, it's very, uh... Is it satisfying in some way or another? Also, why is man's Irish? Because I can't do... Because I can't do an old man accent and maintain it, but I can do a fucking Irish accent. Ireland! 
Why are they I am coming home? I can see they're all in fields of green and fences made of stone. Do you, do you want me to leave you two alone? <laughs> Look, just because I engage with chat does not mean... Yeah? Does it mean what? I'm really sorry if I was just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. <clears throat> you gotta tell me when to do something. Ah! Oh. Yeah, you're you're the one playing this game. I know the answers. Um, Maybe. That one. No. Well, I figured all I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. <laughs> I mean, I need one of those motor things, right? And I don't got one. I that mean, one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh my god. I didn't have an answer to give you. Like, that's why I didn't answer. Okay. I left you all in suspense. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I think we have to press because they took all the evidence. Mm. Hold it, bitch! How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Objection! Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. You didn't say anything. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible! I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. First things first, I have to prove that this man is who he is. Do that, and the motive will prove itself. I'm oh, sorry, is Maya still not here? I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. Uh, yeah, when do I- when do you want me to press? But I wasn't that running one? away or nothing. Then why did you leave? He's just about to say why, bitch. It is so hard for you to quietly listen when someone is talking. <laughs> if I sat quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. Well, you went to buy some food for Polly, see? Bullshit. Food? What is that? <laughs> well, Polly is a bit of a gourmand, see? She only eats these high-quality bird pellets from France. They only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker's shop? Uh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. Then don't object his thing. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's going to believe that. Hmm. I see. So you was lost. Please, you honor. Come to your senses. Oh, I figured I got nothing to do with this incident, anyhow. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Yeah, oh, uh, yep. Seems like it. Then how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh. Or... Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory. Hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Urgh. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old conjurer's head? That's impossible. <laughs> I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Yes, God damn it. Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. <gasps> what do you mean, lying? In court? Order. Order. Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your client. 
Or are you saying? Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Ho ho! Now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Rod, please tell us the witness's name. It's Yanni Yogi. You can't lie in court, dude. That's illegal. Messed up. Exactly right, Em. <laughs> His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Because it was the name of a star of a cartoon. Hey, boo boo. Hey, boo boo. Oh, shit. Yanni Yogi. From the DL6 incident. Were you there? Jesus, are you there? <laughs> it figures the judge would have heard it. It was such a famous case. What does this mean? I clearly cannot think for myself. Your Honor, this man is Mr. Yogi. If this man is he, then he has a clear motive. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yoki. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yoki right here, Right now, and I've got nowhere else to go. Nick! How are you gonna prove it? How can you prove that he's Yeti Yogi? Oh my god, he took all our evidence! What the fuck are we gonna do? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's fingerprints. <laughs> then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Ugh. Er, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, well, I worked at a chemical plant, well, I burned my fingers working with the stuff. Oh, well, yep. What? Yogi, you fuck. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No! Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh. Huh? It seems that the case has been decided, no? No! I know what happened. I know everything. I, I just can't prove it. No, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one! Nick, what are we gonna do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. Yeah, because that's torture to yourself. What do I do? Well, Mr. Wright... Perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief? Uh. Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Von Karma. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot? <laughs> I cannot believe he gave him that idea. It's so comically bad. What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to. Your Honor, <laughs> the defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Yeah, I've been waiting days for this next thing. Take Von Karma up. On my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. Is what this guy on crack? Doing? Uh, order. Order. Um... Well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce! I object! Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. 
I have a right to do as you suggested. Uh, well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Yeah. Nick! This is fucking insane! Well, still want to go through with your little game? Yes, I do. <laughs> this is so stupid. I Let do, your honor! Stand. I will cross-examine her, your honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard! Von Karma's rigged every person's testimony. Every piece of evidence. Except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the fucking parrot. My favorite witness. <laughs> That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. <clears throat> Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please uh, testify for us. <laughs> Who is your owner? Hello! Hello! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. <sighs> Very well. Begin your cross examination. Right. What the fuck are you going to do, Nick? I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Uh... Hello! Hello! Ah! What's breast? Well, we gotta... Yeah. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, um, what do I say? What's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name? Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly! <coughs> <laughs> there you are. I think we've established that this parent is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? I don't fucking know. Sure. All right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Does it really I, I... have anything to do with that? No. Hmm. Please only ask questions pertaining to the matter at hand. Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. We have the option to see Witness. all three versions of the question, so we gotta do you that first. Just... Okay. As I recall, two days ago... Ah! Polly Polly! Have we forgotten something? Ah! Don't forget DL6! I can get Polly to say that here. That will prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Hey, Casua, we're on to the to the investigation of Polly. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello, hello. Ah! That's not what you you're supposed to say. Forgot something we forgot. Hello, hello. Ah! Uh oh, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Something the matter, right? Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot. Could he? He prepares all the test <laughs> testimonies. Did he retrain her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge that her owner is Mr. Yogi. Hello! Hello! Ah! You bribed that parrot so hard. So many treats. 
You really ought to just say the number of that safe. Huh? The safe? Why? <clears throat> Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? 1228! 1228! My, what a reckless pirate. Well, Mr. Rat, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. It does. Alright, now you have two options. So, either the name one we can go forward with, and I have a feeling that'll like, that'll be like, whoa! Or we can go with this very obvious date one. I think the date is pretty obvious. I don't know what the significance yeah. is of the bird being named Polly. That's why I kind of want to show you. You pick. Okay. Well, uh... We'll just go to the name one now. The one you chose first. Mm -hmm. Alright, hold on. Yes, it does. Huh! <laughs> Fascinating. You claim that the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity? Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking this bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... Here you go. Oh, shit. What? Fun fact. I didn't remember that part. Yeah, they, they keep it within the file, which is so fucked. So that's why we're doing this. The D06 case file. That's quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on, then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Rat. Please show us the page. Or in this file is the information connected to the parrot's name. It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiancée committed suicide, see? Hmm. Indeed it does say that, yes. What was his fiancée's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiance who had committed suicide. By the way, what do you guys think about cross examining the parrot? What are your thoughts, Ari? This is the most helpful and straightforward examination that I think we've done in this entire game. Hell yeah, it is! Yeah. That's why he named his parrot after her. Well, slap me silly and call me Brenda. I guess that is possible. <laughs> Fucking father, southern slang. A mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiance? She's, She's only seven years old. <laughs> hmm. Indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Oh, you need both. I'm going to find that. Nick, we're getting closer. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right. But what? <sighs> Very well, witness. You may continue. I forgot that we could use both. My bad. Okay. Uh, get to this press. You bitch. How dare you lie? There we go. Actually... It does. That's why I had her say it. I'm gonna look at the case file real quick, just which page it's on. <laughs> How are my favorite gays tonight? Hello, Henry. <laughs> well, how are we doing, Ari? Um, I'm awake. I mean, they, yeah, that's fair. Very fair. <sighs> Ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your fucking proof! Uh, what could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? Take that! Take that, <laughs> Take that bitch! 
The DL6 case file. What is this obsession you have with this fucking case? It's over. It's done. Your mom. Where in this file is something related to the safe number? It's on the case summary page. The case summary? I've never read before in my life. Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. December 28th. I don't like it how they repeat like half the same lines in this game. Yeah, you could save so much time wow, if you that's... just didn't repeat things. Today's date, 15 years ago. And that's the number on the safe. 1228. He used the date of the DL6 incident as a number for his safety runner. Which is kind of stupid. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Uh, uh, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with a date. Nothing! Hey, can That's I borrow your no. credit card? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is that. This is a mere coincidence. That's all. True. That is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Badass judge moment. Witness. Tell us your name. Uh, wait! This witness, he doesn't remember! No. It's okay. Mm hmm Oh, shit. <laughs> I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different! This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Oh my god, he looks so good. <laughs> order. Order. Yan Yogi. So it was you. So was it you killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Okay guys, you heard him. Everyone go try to take his money. Try is a strong word. I think we'll definitely do it. Dude played the longest con ever. He was method acting. years. He must be a cancer. <laughs> Holding a grudge like that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. It was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond? He said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would get me innocent. Get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent. Really. But he didn't believe me. We won the trial. But I lost everything. I lost my job. My fiancé. My social standing. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter. And a pistol. I don't know how they shipped that in the post. The plan, no the plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. I've held a grudge against a nine-year-old for fucking 15 years, my dude. Wait a moment. Revenge? Against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. No one's shaking their head today. On karma. Where is Mr. Yogi? How do you not know? How did he just disappear? No, this is like a few minutes later. How do you not know where he went? Of course he was taken to custody. Under arrest, your honor. I saw so no, no room for error in his confession. 
then the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is... Innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? Oh, this case was a lot shorter than I remember. There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. Woo! <laughs> I love the confetti! Holy shit, they did it, Scoop. I love the confetti over these fucking still-ass figures. Like, this is the most tense room, and they're just like, here's some confetti. Woo! <laughs> Throw it in their fucking... It's just Maya. Yeah. <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. Well, good job on the case. Why? For what? For why? For why? <laughs> did someone just say objection? Yeah, they did. It wasn't Von Karma. Wait. But that means... No. Edgeworth? Da, 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 da. Your honor, I object to your judgment. What the hell do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. I am just a little emo boy that did a bad. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Shut him the fuck up! <laughs> Really, next level strats, prosecuting yourself. <laughs> Get yourself an unbeatable record. There's no one you can guarantee will go to, uh, will get convicted guilty rather than yourself. The oh, fuck? What do I do? Object. Shoot her! Shoot her! The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edward's outburst. Oh, wait a goddamn minute. Didn't something like this happen yesterday, too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He's right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. You fucking hypocrite. How's them apples? I am sad. For 15 years, I have had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I would tell, what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer, the criminal, and the DL6 incident. Twas me! Your Honor, shoot me! <laughs> Convict me! You are a nine year old fucking child. I'm not gonna shoot you. Try me as an adult! Look at me! I'm an adult! Whippy! I make my own decisions and I decided to shoot my father. Sit your ass down, boy. I am guilty for DL6, sit the statute down, of limitations of which sit. ends today. You the culprit up. is me. What the fuck are they talking about? Order. Order. This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today, like you just said. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Well, if I've officially decided to commit war crimes. Guess I get girl boss. Period. Party. Is there a name <laughs> for this whack-ass complex, this dude gas? <laughs> what the fuck did I just read? <laughs> bah. Humbug. It's obvious. We hold a trial. Right here. Right now. The complex this dude has, um, I believe it's imposter syndrome, but also just like crawling in my skin syndrome. Okay. We try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. Really? 
<laughs> I think I would like to have a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. My friend found a pic Miles of me in a maid costume. Why do you have to put your panties in further twist? I can't. Riley? That is- hmm? that- sorry, there's someone in chat. That is the most unhinged thing I have ever read. <laughs> My friend found a pic of me in a maid costume and now I'm labeled as a femboy. It's not incorrect. No, but then their earlier message was, well, I've officially decided to commit war crimes. Okay. It's a, it's a little, little bit of an escalation. I'm sorry, right? I just wasted all of your effort. I'm confused. Yeah, you fucking did. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I have a feeling you have a complex. I mean, you kill your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, detective. God, uh, just bring up my God. trauma, why don't you? Every femboy has at least one violation of the Geneva Convention under their skirt. This di- Sorry, yeah. Aww. Hey, if I can't have a 12-year-old sense of humor, then I just disappear. Like, I get Thanos snapped. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Roughly. <laughs> For long amounts of time, staring into the eyes of d d defense attorney Phoenix Wright. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is fucking crazy! Just fucking crazy! I'm committing war crimes because I'm getting called a femboy. Well, potato, potato. You say potato, I say you're going to hell. If you can't have a 12-year-old, I deserve to be punished. I said sense of humor! I said sense of humor! You can't just pull quotes like that! <laughs> Defamation lawsuit! Coming your way! You can't just say shit like that! Nick, what the- what are you doing? Huh? Oh. I was just reading through the court record once more. You can read? No. Getting my case ready. It's a picture book. <laughs> <laughs> Hand drawn by Nick himself. <laughs> like every time there's evidence, he just draws a little diagram of what it means. He's just like, yeah. this evidence means that safe number, and then like, and it's like uh, all this different shit, like Polly, fiance, suicide, like type but of thing. He has like this calculus, so he keeps flipping the numbers around. Yeah. Yeah. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. I'm still his lawyer. W what are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it. In court. There's a stenographer and everything. That's why this game was invented. These are real court trials. I'm sorry, Edgeworth. But I don't believe your nightmare. What? You don't think that I shot my daddy? I'm gonna admit that was a, that was an L for me. That was pretty bad. <laughs> Just a dream. It's not real. I gave up on my. I gave up on the bit like a second into it, and I was like, "God damn it! I have yeah. to keep going." Should have stopped while you were ahead. I should have. Truth is right here in this court record. Evidence! I fucking love evidence! Ah! In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. <laughs> Danny's just leaving that bit at the altar, yeah. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. That's the most romantic thing anyone's ever done for me. You're such a fucking dumbass. Edward. You can't read! December 28th, 230 p District Court, courtroom no three. So what you're telling me, that my nine-year-old traumatized brain made something up out of guilt? Nah, never. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge! 
Miles Hutchworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense stay there and cross-examining, quote-unquote, though you can't call it that, it's more like badgering the witness. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today! Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, 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 no. No, Your Honor. Mon Karma, you, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? You took a Sociology 101 class, you bitch! Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? No matter what you do, don't look at my butt. Will the witness state his name and profession and butt size? Miles Edgeworth, I am a prosecuting attorney and um, double cake. Mr. Edgeworth. What if we measured our butt sizes the same way we measured our boobs in cups? Yeah, uh, my cake is a uh, red velvet size. Oh, God. <laughs> you got a lot of badonk done. <laughs> no! <laughs> it's three-tiered <laughs> rather than no. four-tiered. <laughs> Tres leches? What do you mean? <laughs> like, yeah, it's kind of like how, like, um, do you remember that one commercial, like, mid-2000s that was, like, um, ask.com or something? And it was, like, yeah. um, it was, like, I don't know like how to say my wife's cup size because i don't ask her any questions about her life or her preferences and then they were like um well sometimes they compare boobs to fruit what fruit and then uh he was like they're like melons and that was the end of the commercial <laughs> do you remember that vaguely <laughs> I remember they were in this. Just my brain. I think about this all the time. They were in this room. It was a man and a woman, both white, and like they had this like headset on, and they were like, "We've got you, bro." <laughs> well, anyway, that's what I think. That's what I think boob sizes and butt sizes should be. It should be the flavor of cake. Are you vanilla I think cake? It should be cup sizes. Are you flan? No. Are you? I'm a healthy devil's fruit cake. Devil's fruit cake. Yeah. What? I don't know. I okay. Fruit cake and devil's food cake, like don't <laughs> those ask are the different. Questions. Okay. We. I don't know why we're still talking about cake, Mister Edgeworth. <laughs> cups. <laughs> yes. Okay. Boobs are cups because you can cup them in your hand. But like, yeah, a, an ass is obviously cake. An ass is obviously cake. There's no rhyme or reason to why there's letters associated with our uh, fucking bras. All right, there's no reason. So why can't my head cannon be no that we go from vanilla to chocolate to no, red velvet? No, why can't work. we? It doesn't work. Be like there's rhyme or reason work. to the fucking it letters. Work. It doesn't work. I'm dying on this hill. Me and my <laughs> go ahead and die. Me and my size funfetti ass. All right, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Fifteen years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edwards. <laughs> is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the guard. Culture is arbitrary, so you're right. Hope this helps. <laughs> No, no, she's not right. <laughs> Danny fighting for her right. life in this bakery. I am so good at arguing the stupidest shit. No, no. I'm not so good at, good at it. Wrong. I you're am wrong. louder than you, so you therefore so I am right so all the wrong. time. I you love I love having you conversations like this. Incorrect. That's called autism, and that's ableist of you. So I'm gonna You're need to go. You're diagnosed incorrect. <laughs> stop, stop self-diagnosing me. All right, You're let's go. Incorrect. When Edgar, one detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. I have a testimony to give. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. 
As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and they began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. This just in, Ari projects internalized ableism against her gracious host on stream! Alright, everybody, oh. it's time to get out the, the cancel paper. Oh I'll remember this on two, on Wednesday, just you wait. This is a core memory. <laughs> <laughs> just you wait. Just you wait. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi, because I was nine and stupid. I wanted to stop them from fighting. I wanted them to stop fighting. A minute later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That is all. <laughs> In today's essay, I will discover why my trauma means that I should admit guilty in a court of law. Until now, you thought this memory was a dream? We were stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out and I lost my memory of the events. Bleh! The same claim Mr. Yogi made. Very well. Mr. Rat, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir! Alright. Just based on what you remember from the evidence, do you know what the contradiction is? Um... Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, we're gonna look at the evidence. Wait! Uh, the electricity went out. So what? Because of the earthquake, right? The elevator stopped. What fucking elevator is vacuum sealed? Well, you lose oxygen when you're in there. Like, you're- you're- you're away from the vents, and it's hard to breathe, because everyone's got too much carbon dioxide in the air. Hmm. There you go. You were trapped in an elevator before? That's terrifying. I would take the stairs for the rest of my life. Yeah, I would no longer... <laughs> I'd be in the best shape of my life. <laughs> um, the son was Edward H9 when bullet gun and heart and murder weapon was fired twice. Wait a minute. He said he was only once. There you go. Dumb stupid head. You dumbass! No, I'll press first. I'm not sure. <laughs> the gun fired once. Yes, that's me. I think <laughs> after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. The screen. Okay, hold on. To this day. Yes, I can practically hear it now. I don't know if I ever forget that scream as long as I live. There it is. One part of that testimony that clearly contradicts the evidence. But I don't know what it means. I'd better find out and quick. Oh, there it is. All right, let's present this. We know we know the answer. We're so good oh, at yeah. this. Let's keep presenting this fucking file for every sure piece of you... <laughs> evidence. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? The player says otherwise. Yes, I'm sure of that. Oh shoot, I stand corrected. Yeah, I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. The rescue is down under. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Dumbass bitch. Look at this file one more time. Imagine not knowing the entire case file before you 
went into this trial. This plainly, this plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? And you don't enjoy speaking clearly. I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell me which page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Andrews? Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Cleanly? <laughs> what did it mean, cleanly? <laughs> did I say plainly? You said cleanly. Oh, whatever. Miles Edgeworth only heard of one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Holy shit, he's got a point. Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. No, 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 no. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm. I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Rat. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we've heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? Yeah. Your Honor, I think I'll be able to show you proof. What? Impossible! Now, now, Mr. Von Karman, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show us your proof. Do you have any evidence that the second firing of the pistol was related to the incident? It's right there! It's right there in the little baggie! In the little Ziploc bag! How so? There it is, the little Mike and Ike that broke it all! Okay. Or is it the picture? Is it? I'm not helping you with this. Hmm? I'm not helping you with this. What do you mean you're not helping me with this? I mean, this is your game now. There's there's so little left of this like of this game that I feel like the final moments it should be fully you. you we, we've got enough. We've got enough chances that we won't lose. So. The picture. Okay. Look at this photograph. I'm about to say it, Ari. I'm about to say it. It sounds like it makes me laugh. How did our eyes get so red? This is a photograph of the scene of the crown 15 years ago. Look at that shitty Motorola quality picture. Oh. <laughs> I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. Hey, Ed hey, Edgeworth, that's your dad, right? That's your dead dad? That's your dead yep. dad on the day that he died? That's your yep. dead dad's dead corpse in the elevator where you got traumatized? This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. How does the photo prove it, Ari? He was shot in the chest and then there's one in the window. Let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please. Please, got a clue. Let's do the glass! It's here, in the windy. It's in the windy! It's in the Wendy's. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see. A bullet hole in the door. Your Honor. Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet, there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murderer weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. I can't talk today. It's okay. You don't need to. Order. Order. Mr. Rat, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. 
if A equals B and B equals C? Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary? That's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. The second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. That bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet hole in the door. What? What? What is he talking about? Order. I will have order. Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karman says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So, all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. How did that happen? I don't believe that the second bullet doesn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What the fuck are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? Sorry, Maya. What? I... It looks like I was wrong. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then all of my conjectures are for nothing. N no! But you said you'd do it, Nick! You said you'd get Edward declared innocent! I'm sorry. It's just... When I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I had won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think I, it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick, that's just because our legal system is shit. Well, it seems that we have to finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? So well, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, but that was not your intention? Yes, I did. Oh no. He's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now! Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Rat. Ugh. I went out Jack, but I have I don't know what to say. So I don't know. What do we do, Danny? Huh? You're just not gonna say anything and let me just like suffer. Yeah. Imagine I mean, how I that felt. You just have an objection, I guess. Objection. Your Honor. I, I object. <laughs> no, 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 Mr. Wright. On what grounds do you object, huh? Oof. 
Nick? I, I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh no. Ugh. It must exist. The second bullet. What? What did you just say? Nothing! The second bullet must exist? From where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Rath. Wait, Your Honor. Hmm? I, uh... The, the second bullet. It, uh, it existed. What? We've just heard proof that it did not exist. I, I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It, it's just... Someone took it from the seat of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the, the murderer. The murderer? Then tell us just who is this murderer. I'm still thinking about that one. Mm -hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. But why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? Not easy to find a striped bullet, Mr. Rat. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet? The murderer had to find it, I guess. I don't know, you pick one. Uh, of course there was a need. That's why they took it. Bah! What possible reason could they have had? Well, the reason the murderer took the second bullet away from the scene of with them is this. The bullet would be proof. Uh, maybe they thought that the bullet would be used as proof? Proof. There was a special bullet, so they took it with them. If that was the case, then they should have taken the bullet from inside Gregory as well. Huh? Why would they only take one of the two shots fired? Oh, right. Mr. Ride, have you really thought this through? Oh, what the fuck? Okay. This isn't going so well. Was there some pressing need for the murder? I mean, I guess he... Didn't need it, then. Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Rat? Uh, um... Bah! The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Uh, had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Rat. Got any clues? Nope. You just going with the flow? Yeah, I guess. Alright. Yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take the bullet. Had to, Mr. Rat. What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer. The bullet hit the murderer. J just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. You know? A second. I was just talking off the top of my head. What if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot. Should be themselves. And they left with the second bullet still inside them. Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Why does the judge just say the same thing over and over? He's the, uh... He's yes. the recap. I guess that's how it would work. Yeah, yeah. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside. Yes. What is he talking about? The 
the two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet. <laughs> the bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The scariest fucking murderer you've ever seen. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Hmm. Mr. Rat, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edward has a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock? But took it because... Sorry, that's you. But took it because he was injured. Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. The very obvious answer. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edward. It was Von Karma. Oh, man. Something wrong, Mr. Rat? You seem dazed. Uh, no, no, Your Honor. Well, you have indicated the possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh, should I come out and say it now? Say it now! Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Rat. Who is your suspect? V v uh, my hands are shaking. V what? Von Karma. Von Karma? You mean the Von Karma? The prosecutor? The one standing right over there? Bah! You don't object? Huh. I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? Can you imagine being in this jury? That would be so fucking amazing. I would be gagged, gooped, plucked, and pooped. <laughs> so you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. I would have seen needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Uh. Nick! Let's find out who his doctor is! It's no use. Uh, Edric? I know Von Karma, perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. Nobody's that perfect. So... So what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? Well, Mr. Wright, can you prov produce evidence that to prove that I was shot? Uh... 
Can you think of anything? I know the answer. What? I know the answer, yeah. What's the answer? I'm not telling you. Fucking pick the right one. No! Why not? Because this is you playing! This is your first time playing it. I'm gonna need you... You have no idea what's happened at all? I mean, if they say that he can't pull the bullets out for himself, how am I, su how am I supposed to produce the evidence that he was shot? Let's take a look. Metal detector? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's use a metal detector. <laughs> Alright, come on, come. I'll prove it. I don't even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. Oh my god. <laughs> Smack him over the head with the metal What? <laughs> Yeah, the metal detector. <laughs> A gun! And you shoot him. That was perfect. You wouldn't risk surgery, leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. You, you don't mean. I do. There's a possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. It's inside what? This feels extremely unhealthy. Is, is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. I could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. No wonder Bro's angry. He's had lead poisoning for 15 years. That's why he looks so ugly. My boobs! Uh... I refuse! You refuse. But refusing this means you acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you. <laughs> Order. Order. Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. I have a, a pacemaker. Judge, I called for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we have to end it right here, right now. Uh, Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to test- Nick, what does this mean? I don't know. But we have to give it a shot. No pun intended. I am not throwing away my shot. <laughs> It reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma. You. It was you! I was afraid this would happen. That my crimes would catch up with me. It's too bad that I started playing with fire and convinced someone to commit murder in my stead. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that sucks. And so I remain silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. What the fuck is he talking about? But, but Mr. Von Carmel, can you prove that? Prove? I've never needed to prove anything in my life. It's up to the defense attorney. No, no, no. I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Not I. Mr. Wright? Will, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 in in uh, evidence. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. <laughs> With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No. I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What the fuck are you talking about? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have my proof. What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edward? 
I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. Um... There were two shots that rang out. I mean, the, the photo, it's, there's a bullet going through the window. Nick, um, if this is your final proof, don't you think you should choose something a little better? Huh? You mean that was the wrong evidence? Everyone looks kind of puzzled. Mr. Rat. Well, what the fuck I is think it? you'd better dig out the right evidence and quick. Is it the case file? What page? No clues found on the scene. One bullet found in the heart, the murder weapon was fired twice. I mean, it was... I don't know. Yeah, let's show the defense attorney badge. That's the real evidence And at the end of the day. I don't know what it is. Okay. Here's my- here's my hint to you. Um... Think of the conversation that they had before. You have none of the DL6 of evidence. I mean, we have the DL6 bullet. You wanna try that? I guess. Can't think of anything else. Th that's a bullet. Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely, with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. Is this about to explain what... Oh my god, it's about to explain what they are. I'm not doing that, no. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma's is... Mr. Von Karma is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we will compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet and solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? <laughs> this is so much. That scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait. Trauma! I know that scream! Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air! Uh, I'll stop you! Stop breathing my air! Stop fighting! Get away from my father! Yeah. It's that scream I heard in the elevator! Fifteen years ago! Von Karma! It was you who screamed! I'm back, baby! Mr. Von Karma. What? 
It's worth! It's worth! Only you would dare defy me! So, it was you. You and your father are my curse! Your father shamed you with a penalty on my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! I'll bury you! I'll bury you with my bed hands! Death! Death! <coughs> I, I feel like hitting himself in the head like that would do some serious damage. So is screaming like this. Fifteen years earlier. Chief Prosecutor. I'm sorry. Lord Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. Thank you for the water check. I've covered you in, in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth! It was a shock like none I had ever known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. I was in pain, a horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then the lights came back on, the elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. Bang, bang, lock and death and bang. In his last moments, Gregor Edgeworth was unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge, what? what are you doing? Do your job, bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it! Very well. Appears we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edward. Yes, your honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Miles Edward. We refilled the confetti cannons. Not guilty. Yay! Yay! Look at that murderer over there. That is all. This court is adjourned. Yeah, brother. December 28th, 5.38 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Nick! Nick! We did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick! Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd have it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself, but now it's all just a good, good memory. This is not a good memory for me. So, it's finally over, Edward. Right? <gasps> Thank you for redeeming Gender Ben. Right? Yeah. I, I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try thank you. I, I, I see. Th thank you, right? You're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. Uh, sorry, I'm not good at feelings at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. 
She's got you there. Whoop! Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner on me. I'll bring a stripper. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Uh, I, I see. <clears throat> Whoop. <laughs> he really had that thank you on the edge of his tongue, didn't he? Yep. <laughs> I, I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little out of time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, yo! I'm back! Oh, God. Lana! Y'all were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lana? Who, me? Oh, I went back to college within the two days since I decided to change career paths. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? <laughs> it's over, Nick. My life is over. Why that sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick. I'm not longing for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Keyonce. She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. She's leaving me behind. Should have seen that coming. They all go to Paris, don't they? Yo, Edgy. There you are. Um, yes. Here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift from me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts! You come along uh, tonight, too. My treat, pal. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah? What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me. It's got money in it. Oh, well, yeah. That's not strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? Nick! Wasn't that the ex exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38? No. No! Larry, it was you! What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from the school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was uh, bored, so he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too low. Right. You may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really right. I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, huh? Edward. Huh? You should have told me. No, no, Nick. It was 15 years ago, and he's got the tism. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Ugh. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, you have always been so something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. Death. The death sentence for both of you. Man, if I had only known, I'd have become a prosecutor. 
The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edward. Want to switch, right? Hey, y'all! Line up, I'll take a photo! Hey, photo time! Let's go! And after that, dinner on me! Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. He celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. December 29th, 5.02 a.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. Prosecutor Phoenix AU? That'd be funny. Whoa. I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only five. I guess you go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you? It made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium. In training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you, but I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. Goodbye? What time is it? Well, the first train for the mountains have already left. To the station. Zoom. I'm too late. Hey! Nick? Maya! So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Wait. What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yeah. Only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped in Mr. Grossberg and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the only one who stopped Von Carmel, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. Um, she talked to Polly. No, that's not the right answer, sir. Okay. A bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back! Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless! I don't know about that. Oh, God! The train's running! So... This is it. See you soon, Maya. <laughs> A tearful goodbye! Oh. Thanks, Nick. I have no idea who this is. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. And say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now, a new story begins. The same old creepy cast of characters. Ha! Huh. Don't 
think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Rat, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, oh, I've got a kind of feeling about this. Sorry, I'm not able to click any buttons. It's going automatically. Okay, yeah, it's a... Uh... Ending credits. You did it. So what did you think? I'm not smart enough for this game. Hey, pal, Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoop! Detective Gunshoe! Then he hung his head low and went right back outside. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Yeah, no one is smart enough for this game because it's complete bullshit half the time. Don't worry. They, it's not based in logic, it's based in educated guessing. But I was trying to make educated guesses. I know, I it, it doesn't work all the way. Huh, Nick? Nah, I haven't seen him recently. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. That's Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you'd call a cheap gate. Uh, oh, she's in Hawaii right now, yeah. Yeah, it's it literally, people look up walkthroughs all the time because it's such bullshit answers. It gets worse with every game. Oh my god, what? You forgot about me? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. Problem is Ari's too smart for dumb shit. Exactly. Yeah, some of the answers are really weird. What a case in a game. Yeah, Ari, you did really well with it. Woo, congrats. Thanks. I feel very dumb. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. Uh, ah, this is the defense attorney for whom I wrote that affidavit for years. Oh, you should know I've taken over management of the Gitwater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. I forgot the French accent. That was definitely... It was it was quick time. I had no time to get a prepared fromage. <laughs> oh, it's you. Phoenix Wright? Oh, yes, me is understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him of late. Ah, uh, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. What does that even fucking mean? I say it multiple times. No one knows. Another one's you. Phoenix, right? Is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with me. I'm like, Phoenix? Okay, never mind. Every day, this guy's just about to read. Yeah, this game learns to tire you out. It learns to gaslight you. I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public uh, until the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kid's dream, you know? You're never going to show your face, buddy. Joaquin Phoenix standing menacingly in the corner. Yeah, what type of, of uh, star name is Phoenix? Oh, uh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but didn't have time, so I sent her some pink princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at anyway? Oh, in fact, there was a case that was so odd that a YouTuber doing a Let's Play of the series ended up playing said case off screen. <laughs> I wonder what screen. Uh, I wonder what case. Right? Who's that? That's you. <laughs> Right? Who's that? But you know, I stuck into the studio the other day. I saw her. The one inside the pink princess suit. Ugh, what a dog. It's kind of a shock for a boy my tender age. Do you think it was, a uh, old bag? I will not miss making that voice. Yeah, I remember right, that lawyer guy. Huh, me? I've been trying to become a paranormal photographer. You know that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real? Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. It wasn't me, though. Off. <laughs> Finn. Alright. Tears. All the tears. 
now that you've played through. Full thoughts. Case 5 doesn't exist. What are your thoughts? I really like this game. It's fun. Yeah. It's a goofy little game. No! Like get me out of here! No! Stop playing this bullshit! No! Get it out of here! No case five! But yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've been avoiding looking up things about the like franchise and stuff like that, <laughs> but I kind of want to get into it now. Yeah. It's a good franchise. I like it. I am worried that the second and third games are going to be boring, so I'm, I have to be convinced, but um, we're going to be taking a hiatus from Ace Attorney for the next little while. Mm. Uh! But yeah, I'm so glad that you can join me on this adventure to uh, force you to play this game. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it was very fun to be coerced into playing this game. I... <laughs> All right, oh, God. My voice does hurt, but I am satisfied and I'm ready for the weekend. It'll be worth the w uh, wait, y'all. We're a joy to watch. Oh, thank you, Henry. Mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like they're not going back to the game anytime soon. Shame, because after that case is one of the best ones. You think case five is the best? Hold on. Oh, wait, the YouTuber. I'm so sorry. I thought you were talking about case five of this game. Yeah, this was fun. Thank you, Kazua. Yeah, you can... If you want to, like, if there's somewhere out there that has, like, uh, like, Case 5 on YouTube of some YouTuber wa uh, doing this, you should totally watch that. But no, you can't make me play it. Not again. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, time to do the ending spiel. Um, thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching, if you did. If you're new here, not yet following, what the fuck are you doing? Me and Arya are gonna point at you. Are we, yes. are we pointing? Yes. I'm pointing right now. I am also pointing. Now let's heckle you. Heckle! Ha. Heckle! Ha. Wow. Heckle! Heckling. Fucking follow! It's free! Yes. You little bitch! Yeah, just do it. Just become a witch. Add a W. Yeah. <laughs> you were a bitch, but you added a W in there, and now you're a witch. <laughs> Follow you schmucks! Yeah. <laughs> also, if you want to follow me anywhere else besides this lovely platform of Twitch, you can follow me on Twitter and TikTok, both at Danny underscore the underscore Uh Ari, what's today's plug? Um. Nah, y'all should just show Danny some love. He's cool. I am cool. I'm the coolest around. How cool are you? Ice cool! What? Ice cool! Shit. Crawling. <laughs> Damn. I, I should have been a should have been a screamo singer. I don't think he would have enjoyed that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out with the puns. Never, never do that. Um. So yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing next week. <laughs> mm. There may be a day you that I play go. play Otome or something. Oh, another, like, uh, dating novel thing? Yeah, like Dandelion, like I tell you. Well, Dandelion costs money, Ari. <laughs> and also, I'm pretty I'll sure it's only on the Switch. The money, Danny. I'm pretty sure it's only on the Switch. Oh, wait, it's not. Which one of these is it? Dandelion Wishes Brought to You? Dandelions in the Sky? Which of these? I didn't know there was another one, but it's Wishes Brought to You. Oh, is this why it's been in my wish list? I've been like, what the fuck is Dandelion scrolling past it every time? Yeah. I've already done Dream Daddy. I already did Dream Daddy. I I played all of them. I fell in love with I the majority of them. Of it, yeah. <laughs> There's a few clips on my channel if you want to see some highlights. Um, mostly it's me simping over um oh god, what were their names? The drunk Brian. Robert. I didn't like Robert that much. I liked Brian. I loved yeah that i love the big one i um i had a love-hate relationship with the blonde one and um joseph. joseph and um absolutely in love with craig like phone background type of in love with craig oh, yeah. was he your phone background no he wasn't but he would have been if i had <laughs> if i was younger and 
Oh, those are fun streams. Isn't there one where you find weapons in a dungeon and that become hot men? Isn't that like a boyfriend? Oh, God, what is that called? I, I heard there was controversy around it. A boyfriend dungeon or something like that? Do you know what I'm talking about, Ari? Nope. Oh, God. There was like a... I want to see if I can remember what this is. Yeah, so the reason I pointed you in the right direction for that Maya thing before, that was like the right evidence, um, was because I got it wrong when I was playing through my first playthrough, and it was she she looks so sad, and I was <laughs> like, no, never again. <laughs> so no. Okay. Uh. You traditionally don't listen to the suggestions I make anyway, so. <laughs> well, sometimes you choose the wrong answer, and I, I can't accept that. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. Okay, Kotaku will, of course, help us with this uh, controversy that I don't remember at all. There is a shithead at the heart of Boyfriend Dungeon. He is terrible, well depicted, and this piece is not about him. This piece is instead about everything hanging in the air around him. The response to Boyfriend Dungeon has been scattershot, to say the least. Middling review scores from some publications, adoration from a large subset of the game's audience, intense backlash, including harassment and vague threats of violence from a smaller part of said audience, and the backlash to the backlash through the corner of the industry I happen to reside in. And for all of this, many people have been left wondering how the fuck we got here. When I was younger, I really liked, uh, I liked discovering Kotaku, because, like, I, I felt stupid because I didn't know everything. So now, and, like, they always explained things to me in funny ways. All right. To answer that question, I will have to regale you with a short history of terrible discourse. Uh, da 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 da, -da. Uh, it is time to address anti-shippers, and I hate this, anti-anti-shippers. Anti and anti fandom hell originally refer to people who did not like a specific relationship pairing. If I don't want the arbiter to oh so tenderly smooch Master Chief, then I would be a Master Chief arbiter anti. However, in 2016, the term changed to mean something someone who was against the depiction of relationship dynamics deemed morally compromising. Student-teacher relationships, for example. Uh... It is actively believing they should not exist or be depicted in media. Uh, anti, uh, to be anti then is to actively campaign against art that includes such problematic material, which is how we get anti antis called such because they aren't for people making art about inter problematic dynamic or relationship here, but they believe that the art shouldn't be policed. Um, moving on. They talk about archive of our own, which is triggering. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> um student teacher tag all of that uh so we're in the we're talking about anti-culture which i vaguely remember and then at the center of all of this is boyfriend dungeon a game with a cute queer aesthetic and compromised relationship dynamics uh that just so happened to release in 2021 just as tumblr communities have started collapsing in response to poor ownership sending their remaining tw uh, members to Twitter, where they found easy access to the personal accounts of developers. Uh, there is definitely legitimate criticisms of the game's content warnings. We've covered those already. Uh, however, the all medium should be for me attitude surrounding the recent boyfriend dungeon backlash has gone beyond content warnings and onto content removal. People think that the game should be removed. Okay, so... I think there's just a bad relationship dynamic in here. I have no idea what type of relationship dynamic it is. Um, and uh, if I recall correctly, the main thing I heard was that there are some themes and topics that came up that people weren't expecting and ended up getting hurt, but they updated the trigger warnings, I think. That sounds about right. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so that's the main controversy surrounding it. Are you informed now, Ari? Um, I kind of um, grayed out a little bit there. Yeah, you're good. I, I expected that. Yeah. Um, basically, they forgot to add trigger warnings for some more uh, uh, some more uh, heavy topics and themes. Hmm. And they've updated it now. 
Yeah, because I kind of wondered where it fell off the internet, but never really thought about it. Yeah, the, I remember there was huge controversy back then when I was, like, you know, reading all these articles and stuff like that. I was like, what is Boyfriend Dungeon? And then just kind of, like, let it get off my radar. <laughs> hmm. No idea. Yeah, I don't know. I'm Ari, Dandelion looks really ugly. It's an older... You don't have to play it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um... Well, there's always the KFC dating sim. I already did that. He was finger licking delicious in my. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I love that game. It only took me one stream, but god damn it, was it worth it? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've played all of the great dating sims, at least those with a gimmick. So now I gotta look for the more niche ones. I also have a really depressing game called To the Moon that I never played. All I know is that it's a slow burn game. The Boyfriend Dungeon one? If you like horror, Scarlet Hollow is good and has some dating sim elements. Tell me more, tell me more. Hold on. Scarlet Hollow, by the way, is a great name. I love that. Monster Prom or How to- I have- I've played Half Tatiful Boyfriend. I've played Monster Prom. But, here's the thing. I was actually thinking, like, in the future, like, friend events where I play all three of the monster games that I own at some point. I don't know. I've only played the first game, and I, of course, went for the ghost. Because she is the funniest character in the game. Alright. Uh... I meant dandelion. Oh, slow burn. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I feel bad now. <laughs> I've played too many romance games. Yeah. The one that I would love to play on stream, but I know I can't because it's a mobile game. There was a game that I uh, owned called um, My Boyfriend is Prince Horse or something like that. Fuck off. Yeah, My Horse Prince Boyfriend or something like that. It was it was literally a, like an anime boy's face on a horse. Yeah, there's Monster Prom too, and I have a uh, I have the second and third game. That one. <laughs> Wait, this Scarlet Hollow looks really cute. Why is it still in early access? Oh, what is that app called? I fucking. <laughs> I was never able to play it because it would be like, it would be like, you can only go on here once a day. And it's like, I want to be able to just pay you money to have the whole story. I don't mind that, like, type of thing. Not all of the chapters are out yet, but uh, that is out. What is out, is, all that it is out is very good. Okay. All right. I have a feeling this is something that we're going to figure out next, next time. Mm. So I will be back next Monday, I think. <laughs> uh, my streaming schedule is as inconsistent as my mental health. So just... where we just go with the flow. I do have a game, like a parody game. Okay, this might be what I play next. It's called Pizza Game. Um, it's a visual novel that I've been meaning to play, so... I'll just download that and then hope for the best. But anyway, thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching. I hope you have a great time of day wherever you are. And I will see you guys on Monday. Same time, same place. Uh, bye! Bye!